echoing pretty bad. Same with me. All right, Danny, I can't hear you. Hey, Danny, can you see me? Um, I can see you. Can you hear me? No, I can't. Yeah, it's just echoing a little bit. We can't use the computer speakers. Sorry. But that's the only way we can hear you. I know. Okay, I'm here. I'm here. You hear me? Danny? You're okay. Uh, you're they got to work out their sound. Okay. I'll just wait. That's cool. No biggie. We got all night. <laughs> hey, bud. All right. It's just... It's just it's just echoing a lot. I can barely hear you. Well, I can't hear Danny at all right now. No, Danny's leaving. <laughs> well, he, they've got to figure it out, Tom. I know, I know. That's cool. That's no problem, bro. I'll just hang out. That's all I'm doing. This darn stuff. It's ridiculous. Tom, how's this? That's good, bud. I can hear you fine. Can you hear that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're good, Dan. You got me? You got me? Tom, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you. Okay. Hey, he's not he's not coming through. Are you unmuted? Yes, I'm unmuted. That is making a difference. We're, you, we turn it down a little too low. If you bring it up a little, I think we'll be okay. Yeah, I'm not. Hey, Danny, can you hear me? Yep. All right. I'm not muted either, so we're cool. We're good. I hear you. I hear you loud and clear. Danny, can you hear me? Greg, Danny. I'm not muted, so. I can hear you, Danny. I can hear you.
Can you can hear me now? Yeah, 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 I can hear you. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? You're going in and out, dude. Dan? We're working on it, Tom. I know. Hey, you're cool, dude. Don't worry. If I keep you stay I can do okay. I can hear you, Greg. Greg? Greg? I can hear you guys. I'm sorry about this, boys. I'm hearing something there. Rick. 
Greg. Greg, can you hear me? Danny, can you hear me? I got no sound. Yeah, you got no sound. Uh, you got no. There we go. There we go. There we go. No, no. You got plenty of sound. They're working on it. Okay. No, I just was wondering. I'll just be quiet. Ah. Uh, this is Jeremy Boone. I know I'm attendant here, but uh, I, I did message some uh, tips to Greg via uh, direct message on Zoom that may help solve the problem. Oh, cool. Thank you. Tom, can you hear me here? Can anybody yep, hear me? I can online? hear you now. Yep, I can hear you now, Dan. Can anybody hear the microphone online? Can anybody hear? Touching the mic? One, two, one, two. You can hear my oh, voice because I, I can hear it online. Yep. I, I hear right. Danny. Great. Can you guys do me a favor? When you guys are not speaking, can you mute your microphones as we're obviously having a tech problem on this side? Okay. So I just um, mute. Yeah, so in the bottom left uh, corner of your screen, yeah, yeah. You can mute yeah, yeah, yeah. When you're not speaking. And then when you are speaking, obviously you can unmute it. That'll avoid all the looping that we're having issues right here. All right. Well, then I'm gonna mute, I'm gonna unmute. I'm gonna mute right now. Okay. That is amazing. Thank you, sir. I think this is a yes. Dan Sands, Linda Krausert, Peter Hoganek, 
Dan Mihalik. Uh, I think you're asking me, I'm here. Jason Vermillion. Justin Clausen. He got off, right? Jeff Franken. And Roger Burton, we know, is, is not here tonight. So I've got six. Quick test, real quick, ladies and gentlemen. Um, can I have someone speak real quickly just to see if we can cure to win the system? Can we have? I just have someone random on the screen. So, Danny Wilcox, please. Hear you on your microphone. But I'm trying to see if I can get some. I can, you can unmute my. Or Tom, or Tom, or Tom, or Tom, or Tom. Okay, this is Tom. I'm unmuted. Can you hear me? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Shall I mute? Shall I mute back on? Yeah, can you keep saying something? Can you keep talking for me? How are you doing? How's the weather? <laughs> It's nice here, so God bless you all. Thank you for coming. I appreciate it. Uh, you do a lot of work, and you don't get and you don't get uh, you don't get paid for it. So God bless you. We can hear you better, Tom. It's good. Okay, shall I mute or unmute? Yeah, I'm here. Speaking to the mic, it sounds really good, but if you're far away from it, I can't hear you. Um,
Uh, I can't hear anybody. Tom, oh, there you are. There you are. Hey, you were there, now you're gone. How's this, Tom, if I keep my computer on? That's good, right there. That's good, Danny. We have meeting minutes to approve. So, did you guys get to review those? Yes. Anybody? Okay. One set of meeting minutes. It's for uh, January 19th and 20th. There was a holdover. We recessed. And All right. So, um, I'll make a motion we approve the uh, meeting minutes for the January 19th uh, meeting that was also recessed in okay. I'll second that. Okay, we've got a motion, we've got a second. Motion from Peter, second from Van. So, um, any discussion? Hearing none, with that, all in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Okay. All right, now we've got to go through real quickly here. We've got to go through. Just watch it, Dan. Watch it. There you go. Let's start with the chair first. Okay, that's good. Nomination, we have a motion and a second. So then um, I'll accept it. Thank you. Um, all in favor then? Aye. Aye. What are we voting on? Chairman. I'm sorry, I give, I heard nothing. Minutes, minutes. There's nothing minutes. coming across the Zoom. Minutes. I got the minutes, I voted yes on the minutes. Okay, okay. Dan, can you hear me? I can hear you now. Okay, what we just voted on, we had a nomination and a second for the chair. Who, who was nominated for? I was nominated. Okay. Hey, Wilcox was nominated. Okay. And we already I, I, okay. We closed the nomination and already voted, if you didn't hear that. Are you for I that? I did not hear anything. But I'll, I'll vote for Danny. Okay. okay. <laughs> Thank you, Dan. I, I mean, now that I could hear you. Okay. okay. <laughs> now we need a, a nomination for a uh, co-chair. And um, actually, I'd, I'd nominate Dan Mahaley. He's been co-chair. I'll second that. So, do you have any other nominations? Okay, I'll, I'll move that we uh, close the nominations for Vice Chairman. I have a second. Okay, I'll second it. Nominate We've got a motion. We've got a second. So this this is for the co-chair who is uh, Dan Mahalik. So all in favor? Aye. 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 All right, Dan. Good job, Aye. Dan. Good job. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Dan. Okay. Now we're going into the public hearing process. Um, we open this hearing with the earlier, so let me just go over how, how this will work. We're a volunteer quasi-judicial board. Are you, are you okay, Christina? We good? Okay, so what that means is essentially we, we hear these applications, we compare the applications compared to our codes and ordinances that we have, 
That's how we relate them. The outcome is either we can vote uh, to approve, disapprove, or approve with conditions. And when I state we're voting for approval, all that means is we're voting to recommend approval. So that's 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 our level, which we can do. And the next step, that application will then go to the BOCC. They have the authority to change things or whatever or accept requests. But us, all we can do is approve, recommend not approval, or approve with conditions. Okay? So the order of the hearing goes as such. We start out, the application is presented by our staff. Then we ask the applicant to present. And then at that point, I ask for public comment on the application. Next step is I ask to uh, the applicant or staff to possibly engage in some, some of the questions that were asked during public comment. After that's completed, we close that. And then we go to our option to ask questions of the applicant and staff. After that's completed, we vote on the application. So it looks Thank like you. we have, it looks like we have, I think three on, on the agenda tonight. So we will start with, I believe the first one is the uh, Messer, S-U-R. I believe that's the first one we have. So. We'll start with the staff presentation on. Oh, come on. Good. All right, thanks for bearing with us, everybody. Thank you, Greg. We're taking a look at Messer Event Center, special use by review, SU-19-0099. This is a request for a special use by review to allow for an existing event center located on approximately 20 acres at 33955 County Road 37, Kiowa. This is just for those who kids not gonna go up there. <laughs> Data pertinent to this case, the property owner is Ralph Messer. The applicant representative is Tom Maroney. The size of the SUR area is 20 acres. A pre-application meeting was held October 3rd, 2019. The community meeting was waived in the pre-application meeting. A formal application was made April 21st of 2020. The referral process began May 13th and wrapped up June 3rd of 2020. That's a 21 day referral. The first planning commission was scheduled for September 1st, 2020 and continued to a date certain of October 6th, 2020. On the October 6th, 2020 planning commission, it was continued to a date certain of December 15th, 2020. On the December 15th, 2020 Planning Commission, it was continued to a date certain of Fe February 16th, 2021, today. And the Board of County Commissioners was first scheduled for August 12th, 2020, and has been ultimately continued to March 10th of 2020. The applicant did give public notice twice to reflect this new date of public hearing. Notice was published in the Elbert County News on January 21st, 2020, excuse me, 2021. Sign was posted on property January 28th of 2021. And ma mailed notices were sent to property owners within 1,320 feet of the subject property boundary on January 28th, 2021. Here we have the notarized certification of mailing. Here we have the notarized certification of sign posting with the picture of the sign posted on property. Here we have the affidavit of publication posted in the Elbert County News. Here you can see the vicinity map of the site 
um, showing County Road 37 and State Highway 86. Here's a area zoning map. You can see that all of the properties in the area are agricultural A, besides that of the property directly south that is also owned by the um, Ralph Messer. That's zone commercial. Grant here has um, been kind enough to get us our pro um, slideshow here in person. Thank you, Grant. The proposed, here's the proposed SUR exhibit. A little history. Um, the the pre-application meeting was held October 3rd of 2019 with Tom Maroney, Christina Stanton, Greg Loudenslager, and Fire Chief Jerry Lemansky. A formal application was submitted and deemed complete on April 21st of 2020. The first referral was May 13th to June 3rd of 2020. The original notices were mailed on Jan, uh, July 14th, 2020. It was originally posted in the Ranch Land News of July on July 16th of 2020. And the Elbert County Planning Commission opened public hearing and continued this case to a date certain of September 1st, 2020 on August 4th of 2020. Planning Commission continued this to a date certain um, of December 15th. On December 7th of 2020, the Kiowa Fire District formally withdrew their previous referral comment of no objection in an email dated December 7th, 2020. Deputy Chief Og Ogborn indicated the following, an annual fire code inspection of the arena office building and any other associated buildings on the property will be required. Fire lanes must be clearly marked on all sides of the building. Access and egress must be improved. Currently, there is only one way in and one way out of the property. And any event over 250 attendees requires an inspection and approval by the fire district prior to this event. On December 8th, 2020, Albert County Public Works and the Colorado Department of Transportation formally withdrew their previous referral comment of no objection. In an email withdrawing their previous referral comment, Public Works stated that the applicant, uh, that quote, the applicant has far surpassed the number of vehicle trips per day count per their traffic letter. The applicant has held several events over the past several months, have had well over 100 attendees. Albert County Public Works is now making the following condition of approval. Applicant will have to construct an XL decel lane on the north side of State Highway 86 and an eastbound left turn lane per the CDOT recommendation as stated in a previously forwarded email to you. All engineering designs must be approved by CDOT prior to Elbert County approval, end quote. Also on December 8th, 2020, the Elbert County Building Department formally withdraws their previous referral comment of no objection in an email dated December 8th, 2020, Faith Mayor indicated that, quote, the building department will need to inspect the current facility and we will require a permit to be pulled for change of occupancy. The applicant should be aware that changing the occupancy to assembly will include new code requirements, some of which may include permanent bathroom facilities, sprinkling requirements, access and egress for safety, among others, end quote. On December 15th, 2020, the Planning Commission continued this to a date certain of February 16th, 2021, which is today. On January 13th, 2021, the Board of County Commissioners continued this to a date certain of March 10th, 2021. On January 21st, 2021, notice was published in the Elbert County News. On Jul January 28th, 2021, notice was mailed to property owners within 1,320 feet of the subject property. On February 3rd, 2021, Kiowa Fire District formally submits their support for approval with the following three conditions. First, the business must be subject to annual fire inspection scheduled by the fire, Kiowa Fire Protection District. Two, the business must notify the Kiowa, Kiowa Fire Protection District at a minimum of one week prior to any event that will be scheduled to have more than 250 people in attendance. This will allow the fire district to inspect the premises for fire safety compliance. And third, a fire apparatus access road shall be designed and maintained to support the imposed loads of fire apparatus of 56,000 pounds and shall be surfaced so as to provide all weather driving capabilities, which would be gravel road base or recycled asphalt, 
to meet the 2016 IFC section 50323 fire department vehicle access shall be required for each building. On February 3rd, 2021, the Elbert County Sheriff Tim Norton confirms his support for approval. Sheriff Norton confirmed that he has agreed to provide traffic control and security for large events with the Messer Event Center carrying the cost of services provided by the Sheriff's Department. Sheriff Norton specified that traffic control would consist of a minimum of two police cruisers with flashing lights and uniformed officers directing traffic at the intersection of County Road 37 and State Highway 86. The referral process for this, the applications were sent to referral agencies per the Elbert County regulations. Responding referral agencies were Elbert County Public Works, had no objection. Elbert County Health and Human Services had no objection. Elbert County Assessor's Office, no objection. Elbert County Building Department, no objection. Colorado Division of Natural Resources, no objection with an attached letter. I'll get to that in a second. Intermountain Rural Electric Association, no objection. Kiowa Fire District, no objection. Elbert County School District, no objection. And Phillips 66, no objection. The first referral comment that is of note was from Keith Vanderhorst. This excerpt from the letter is dated May 6th, 2020. In order to use the existing well for commercial use in an event center, a well permit allowing such uses need, needs to be attained. Staff comment, the applicant has stated that no water will be used for any uses associated with this event center. Notable comment, uh, the second notable comment is from Public Works, dated December 8th, 2020. CDOT has withdrawn their approval because the applicant has far surpassed the number of vehicle trips per day count per their traffic letter. The applicant has had several events over the past several months that have had well over 100 attendees. Elbert County Public Works is now making the following conditions of approval. The applicant will have to construct the XL diesel lane on the north side of State Highway 86 and the eastbound turn lane per CDOT recommendation. As stated in previously forward email, all engineering designs must be approved by CDOT prior to Elbert County approval. The Kiowa um, fire um, that comment from building department has already been put on the record here. Kiowa Fire um, also did have their recommendations that are already stated. The impact fees for this case, the indoor arena per the referral comment from building department, the indoor arena would need to have a change of occupancy to assembly based on the newly adopted impact fees. This would be considered agricultural impact. They are calculated at $1,147 per 1,000 square feet. These calculations at 4,000, excuse me, 48,000 square feet comes out to an impact fee of $55,056. Special use by reviews are evaluated utilizing the criteria listed in Article 3E5, A through H of the Elbert County Zoning Regulations. Criteria A, whether the use is in harmony and compatible with the surrounding area and neighborhood. Staff has the comment that this use is compatible with the surrounding agricultural, commercial, and residential land uses in the surrounding area. Criteria B, whether the use will not have an undue burden on available infrastructure. Staff comment, the Colorado Division of Natural Resources has indicated the applicant will be required to drill a new commercial well for this use if approved. However, the applicant has stated they will not be using any water for the commercial uses associated with the Messer Event Center. Criteria C, whether the use will not unduly increase traffic congestion or burden the existing road system. Staff comment, if the size and frequency of, of events is accurately portrayed in the formal application, then it is not anticipated that the use will have an undue burden on available infrastructure. However, multiple referral agencies have expressed concern that the size and frequency of events is not being accurately portrayed in the formal application. The, the, the determination of the need for XL diesel lanes is ultimately the responsibility of CDOT. The applicant's representative, Tom Maroney, 
has indicated that the applicant will comply with the determination of CDOT regarding the XL decel lanes. This determination is expected to be made prior to this case being heard by the Board of County Commissioners on March 10th. Criteria D, whether the use will not cause significant air, odor, water, noise, or light pollution. Staff comment, it is not anticipated that this use will cause significant air, odor, water, noise, or light pollution. The applicant has stated that their intention is to utilize best practices to minimize potential dust, noise, odor, and light pollution. Criteria E, whether all sanitation requirements will be met. Staff comment, if the size and frequency of events is accurately portrayed in the formal application, then the Elbert County Health and Human Services and the Elbert County Building Department have no objection to the use of portable toilets as long as they are ADA compliant. However, if the size and frequency of events exceeds that of the formal application, then further review is needed to determine if portable toilets are acceptable. Criteria F, whether the use will be adequately landscaped, buffered, and screened. Staff comment, the applicant has stated that they do not intend to make any changes to the landscape in an effort to conserve water. Staff has determined that the uses being proposed do not require screening. G, whether the use will not otherwise be detrimental to the health, safety, or welfare of the present or future inhabitants of Elbert County. Staff, staff comment, if the size and frequency of events is accurately portrayed in the formal application, then it is not anticipated that the uses will be detrimental to the health, safety, or welfare of the present or future inhabitants of Elbert County. Based on the contradictions between the formal application and what has been observed, staff has determined that the use is potentially detrimental to the health, safety, and welfare of the present or future inhabitants of Elbert County. Furthermore, the applicant can rectify the life safety concern by complying with the CDOT recommendation. And H, whether the supplemental standards are met for specific uses as applicable. Staff comment, there are no supplemental standards for this type of land use. In addition to the Elbert County zoning regulations, staff reviewed the application against the Elbert County Comprehensive Plan. The findings of this are that the proposed use of the, of the property is supportive of the stated goal that, quote, Elbert County promotes strong, diverse economic and policies of that goal, e.g. six, the county should support the development of agriculture, commerce, industry, education, healthcare, natural resource development, tourism, and residential growth. This event center covers um, many of those. Findings and recommendation. General conformance with the Elbert County Comprehensive Plan. Two, this meets the criteria for approval in the Elbert County zoning regulations. Three, Elbert County subdiv subdivision regulations are not applicable to this application. Four, it is compatible with the existing land uses in the surrounding area. And five, it will not result in significant impact to the health, safety, and welfare of the residents and landowners of the surrounding area. And staff recommends that the Planning Commission and Board of County Commissioners approve SU-19-0099, subject to the following conditions. Condition one, the applicant will be required to remove public hearing signs within seven days of the decision of, by the Board of County Commissioners. The special use by review shall not become effective until all fees are paid, conditions of approval are met, and the special use by review is recorded. Recordation of all appropriate documentation is to occur within 180 days of the Board of County Commissioners' approval. Or the applicant will comply with CDOT's final determination regarding the construction of XL cell lanes at the intersection of County Road 37 and State Highway 86. Five, the commercial well permit shall be obtained if water is to be used for the commercial uses associated with this event center. Six, the property should be assessed and taxed at a commercial rate as it is providing a service and is not just agricultural property. Seven, vehicular ingress and egress will be improved to the satisfaction of Kiowa Fire District. Eight, all outdoor lighting fixtures will be properly shielded from adjoining and adjacent properties and any street right of way. Nine, signage shall be placed to identify parking areas and vehicular circulation. Ten, signage of, at the corner of State Highway 86 and County Road 37 shall be removed from the right of way. Eleven, an updated traffic letter shall be provided to the Elbert County Public Works Department prior to approval. 
Please note that this condition has been met. The applicant submitted an updated traffic letter on February 9th that was produced by professional engineer Curtis Rowe of Kimley Horn. 12, conduct an annual fire code inspection of the arena, office building, and any other associated buildings on the property. 13, fire lanes must be clearly marked on all sides of the building. 14, all points of vehicle ingress and egress must be improved to the satisfaction of Kiowa Fire District. I apologize, I think I already covered that one. All events over 250 attendees must have an inspection and approval by the Kiowa Fire District. 16, all applicable building codes must be met prior to receiving a certificate of occupancy. 17, a fire apparatus access road shall be designed and maintained to support the imposed loads of fire apparatus and shall be surfaced so that to provide all weather driving capabilities. Fire department vehicle access shall be required for each building. And last but not least, 18, the Elbert County Zoning Compliance official is to verify that all conditions of approval are met prior to operation. Thank you. Thank you, Greg. <clears throat> is everybody there? We can hear you. Tom? Uh, yeah, hi there. Do you want to, do you have a presentation? Do you have stuff you want to add? To this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, I want to go through this. I want to go through this. I, I got, I, I want you guys to understand that this has been a long process, and I know you have to deal with it for a long time and uh, i apologize for that um what really started this whole thing was uh and i think ralph messer is in attendance there because i'm not there but um he uh, we were just about to get approval and then he was going to have an event for the fire department and the sheriff's department and his uh, religious organization and a lot more people showed up than they were supposed to and that's not going to happen again i mean we've been through it and we've uh, ralph has been very very good at uh he's talked to the sheriff we have a signed letter from the fire department we have a, a signed letter from the uh the fire and sheriff both and um, one of the things that Rory uh, wanted me to do was get another um, traffic impact study. So we had a traffic impact study done and they did counts. And I believe you guys have it in your packet, but it was like Kimley Horn and um, they're look, working with um, Nick at the state and we've, We've sent all that to them, um, and their 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 determination was that there wasn't going to be any turn lanes needed with what the traffic study has has supported. Um, but and we have we have yet to get something from CDOT because you know with COVID and everything it takes a while, and so we've submitted that. Rory has it. Um, I do have an email that. Um, uh, Curtis was like, no, we don't need this, but it's up to Nick. So we're waiting to hear from Nick at the state, uh, which we have to do. As far as um, the well is concerned, they don't use water for anything. Uh, these participants, this is, this. you need to understand that this is not any different than what's been going on at this arena for 15 years but now it's a public event it was private before um, but the traffic isn't any different it's really it's agricultural they have ropings they have uh, gymkhanas they have 4-h events some dog events but it's just i mean it's everybody in the county is they enjoy this place they like to go there and and do what we are in Elbert county so um, fire, we take care of, sheriff, we take care of, uh, the sign is down. Um, we're working on the traffic with CDOT. 
Uh, whatever we have to do with fire, we will do. Um, uh, building code, whatever we need to do, we'll do. Fire access is already taken care of, and the fire department has already signed off on it. And you have that in your um, uh, packet. And any zoning compliance with uh, Mike, I'll take care of with that with him. So, I mean, it's just, it's been a long way to get to here because of an unfortunate situation, but that's a one-time deal. And that's what started all this. So um, there's, it's, it's just, it's, it's a county, it's a county deal. It's a county deal. I mean, it's 4-H, it's roping, it's horse stuff, it's agriculture. So, I mean, I think the only thing that was, I mean, and I do know that the biggest thing was uh, CEDA. And I'm very confident uh, that we have a, a traffic study that's going to show that. And if it doesn't, if CDOT says no, then we have to deal with CDOT. So that's what we'll do. So I'll, I'll answer any questions that anybody has, but it's, I'm sorry it's been so long, but it's pretty straightforward. Right. Can you hear me? Yep. Tom, thank you. Okay. Any any questions? Any questions? I I know Ralph. I believe Ralph was, Ralph Messer is there. Um, but I don't really think that he needs to go through anything that I've already gone through. Um, it's just it's 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 a it's a county deal. It's going to be a nice. It's it's people enjoy it. People enjoy it, and I think the biggest thing is CDOT. And we did what Rory asked us to do. We got another traffic study. I think he's happy with it, and we'll see what happens with CDOT. I don't have it yet, but we'll get it. Great. Mr. Messer? Thank you. Did he say everything? You, okay. So now what we'll do, we'll ask for um, public comment. If we have, do we have anybody here to comment? Is there anybody on Zoom? I would like to say something if possible. Yes, go ahead, please. And if you could, please um, state your name, your address. And then we ask that the comments be limited to three minutes, if you could, please. Okay, this will be quick. My name okay. is Julie Atkinson. Um, my address is 4702 County Road 106 in Elizabeth. Um, I have, I just wanted to point out that um, Mr. Messer has had open ride nights, Tuesdays and Thursday nights, as well as an open rope and practice on Friday nights. And any of those nights that I've been there, and I've probably been to, you know, 20 of them, there's 15 to 20 young people in the arena working their horses, learning things. And from a community standpoint, we don't have a lot of places for our young people to gather and do something that's wholesome and productive and it's just a wonderful thing. It really is. My own child has taken advantage of it and he's he's benefited from it as well as so many other kids. And I just think that we should we should do everything we can to allow this to go on. It's great for our community. Thank you, Julie. Thank you. And your name was Julie Atkinson, correct? Yes. Okay, thank you. All right, do we have anybody else? Is there any other? Okay, hearing none from uh, any of the participants out there. No, Planning Commission, you guys have questions. Let's go through. Yeah. Oh.
if they say they don't need it today, what happens a year from now when this thing blows up and gets really busy and there's, I mean, I think it's gonna be much more active. Um, it's a good center. There's nothing wrong with it. It's, it's great for the community. And I think it is gonna get bigger and better but the traffic is gonna be an issue. So can they propose something that if later on it does get more active that they do have to put a acceleration deceleration lane in if they don't make them do it now? Do you want me to respond? Yes, if you could. Tom, did you yeah, hear that? Okay. Yeah, I did, I heard it. And one of the things that we have to do is that um, the county, not only the county, but CDOT is monitoring what's going on, okay? And one of the, the deals with CDOT is if it exceeds what we have going at this point in time, then we'll have to revisit it because um, CDOT is, the, they control all. I mean, CDOT can shut this thing down tomorrow. They could just say no. Okay, that's why we did per Rory's um, suggestion. Um, we did another traffic count with a, a reputable engineering company that the county uses. It's their traffic engineer. And he said, look, I need something from him. I need something from him. And at this point in time, um, it, it does not warrant it. If it warrants it in the future, not only the county, but CDOT is monitoring what's going on there, okay? So uh, if CDOT comes back any time in the future and says, stop, we have to stop. I mean, that's all we can do, okay? CDOT runs it. I've dealt with Highway 86 between Elizabeth and Kiowa for, I don't know, 10 years, something like that. And CDOT is the one that is saying, here's what's going to happen. And if we, if we feel there's a problem, we're stopping you. So that's all we can do at this point in time. And we have to rely on CDOT and they're monitoring it. And believe me, the county's monitoring it also. Is, is that okay? That was, that was good. I think Jeff, that it's covered. This is, if, can everyone hear me? Yeah. Hey, this is uh, Todd Collins. I am the Messer's attorney and I represent the arena. And if I could just quickly address that issue, <clears throat> I don't know how many of you know me. I know a few of you do. Um, and my office is, is there in Elizabeth and I can assure you the whole issue with um, the turn lanes is safety for the residents within the county. <clears throat> now, looking at this from the eyes of an attorney and somewhat calloused, uh, I can assure you that along with safety always comes liability. So we hope this thing does explode and grow to the size of Walmart. Hey, that, that's what everybody wants. but. Um, if it gets to the point that traffic becomes a liability, I can assure you the Messers will do the right thing. And if those lanes are necessary, we will install them. I agree with you. Thanks, Todd. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Dan. So, so we have Jason, you got any? I just have one question on the arena. Is it, or do you charge to use the arena or how, how is that handled? Is each person to show up, is that, are they charged independently? Do they pay a membership to come there? How does that no, work? Um, and, and Julie, if you're still there, I hope you are because she knows more about it than I do, or Ralph. But no, they, they pay like a fee to come in, like 15 bucks or something like that to rope or whatever. It's not a club, okay? Um, it used to be a club. I mean, I've, I dealt with this arena 
15 years ago when they first built it and they made it a club because at that point in time, if you had a club in Albert County, you didn't have to have a special use. You just had to pay a dollar a year to be a member of the club. And then it was okay. And this goes on all the time in this county. Um, I mean, I'm a former roper because I'm way too old to be doing that anymore. And uh, I don't like to get hurt. But, um, <laughs> they, yeah, they pay a fee. It's, it's nominal at best. I mean, it's, this is not a real money-making situation. It's kind of a, it's a community deal. I mean, they, they have to charge enough to be able to, you know, pay for the place because it's not cheap. But um, it, they do charge. Yes, sir. So also on that, this is Todd again, to, to better answer that. We, we broke those fees down and we looked at them and basically it pays for the electricity, which those lights are about, if I remember correctly, about $40 an hour, if not more, to run. Yeah. And plus yeah. with animals comes food. So somebody has to pick that up. So um, by the time they pay for the cleanup and the electricity, it's it's not really a a money maker. Uh, is that a long term goal? Sure, it is. Everybody wants to make money, but right now it's not. Like I said earlier, we hope it gets big. It'd be good for the county, brings money to the county, but um, right now we're we're just not there. Yeah, that's correct. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Jason mm -hmm. on the website. We got a website IT. You can go there, what kind of shows are there? Kind of the the charges that they'll have for horses. So, Okay, I was just just trying to figure it out. You know, they're uh, it's just a different, yeah, different yeah. type of agriculture than I'm used to. I'm used to production agriculture, plowing the dirt and yeah. cows, not so much the the roping side of things. So. Well, you know, me too. I got a tree farm and a hay field, and that has made me a lot of money. <laughs> but uh, it's they're trying. It's really good for the kids. I'll, I'll tell you guys this, and this is uh, something I've been talking with Mr. Messer about, is maybe providing the arena for our high school rodeo teams a free place to practice. Uh, and also what I have started doing is I have a fairly good relationship uh, with the people at Elizabeth Parks and Rec. And what we're hoping to do is partner with them. so. People who use their arena in the summertime also have a place to go in the wintertime. So there's there's a lot of things we're doing here, and we hope to do. Um, it's it's like I stated earlier, we're we're just not there yet. Everything has been answered. Ben. Uh, Tom, Tom man. Man. Hey, man. How are you doing, bud? How Good, how are you? Uh, I guess I, uh, my, my concern, I guess, uh, my, my concern is that, uh, uh, yes, hang on just a minute. Hang on just a minute. Can you hear me now? Yeah, good, good. Okay, all right. Uh, I, I, I think it's all well and good that you guys are willing if, if the traffic becomes a problem to to put it in later but i'd certainly like to see that in writing that you would be willing to do that and todd i think you could probably be able to add something to that i think yeah. that's more up to todd than me yeah let right me now. so ben i i have uh uh i have a good relationship with another engineering company and we've done some pricing on that. And given your background, I know that you know this is an expensive project. Right. Um, this is uh, a personal project for the Messers. It's it's not too much associated um, with the church. Um, and so the original bid we got uh, so far is about a million dollars to put those turn lanes in. Right. And 
you know, if the business grows to a point that we need them, I think it's a very doable situation. Um, if you guys or if anyone wants to contact me and we can start hammering out some details of the riding or the commitment, I, I'm definitely open to that. Because like okay. I said, we, we want this thing to grow, sure. but um, we don't want a big traffic hazard setting right there but um, uh, on 37 either. So uh, I look at it from a liability point of view. This issue has been raised so we couldn't plead in <laughs> or, or, or dig or, or put our heads in the sand if something does happen. So right. I, I understand the commission's concerns and I agree with you 100%. But yeah, if, if you guys, uh, if we want to start hammering out some details, like I said, we, we'd be happy to do that. Yeah, we can do that with the BOCC. Yeah, that's what I was I mean, going to suggest is that you you give that, that, that we put it into our agreement and then you work it out with the BOCC. Yeah, Van, I, well, no, that's, and that's where we have to go with this. You know that. I mean, we just have to, uh, it, the, whatever, whatever makes it work. Yeah. Way, the, make it work. The, the, the way I look at it is that uh, down the road, if there's an accident or something there, somebody's going to be responsible for it. And as a taxpayer here, I don't want us to be responsible for it. Right. And I'm certain you guys don't want to be responsible for it either. So and no, that, no, 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 that's no. exactly the way I look at it too, Ben. And I, I think, I think you know that. Um, but yeah, I, I think we can do something. It, it, it shouldn't be a problem. Yeah, I think we can. Yeah, we can. No, but you know that's a BOCC deal, Van. Yeah. Um, and we can certainly we'll address it. Um, but I I think basically what we've got with CDOT now is they're like, hey, if we tell you to change it, you're going to change it. That's what it is. Well, um, yeah. You know, but uh, we can do that, right, Todd? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, I've looked over that report. I don't know if you guys have looked at it. And um, right now, everything, if, if we've got the sheriff out there and what we've, I, I've talked to the sheriff a few times about this and, and he's completely on board. Um, I, I think we're, we're fine. I think what the engineers really focused on was the peak traffic hours. Uh, and there's quite a few cars that go through. I was I was really surprised when I read the uh, the report. But even at those peak traffic hours, um, right now, um, with uh, with two sheriff's cruisers out there and deputies um, directing traffic, um, I'm not worried at this point from a, a legal point of view. I don't think. Um, anyone's going to get hurt there. Of course, there's always going to be traffic accidents, but as their attorney, it's, uh, it's kind of my responsibility to look at the legal liabilities. And right now I, I can tell you, I'm not concerned based on what the experts are telling me. Now, like I said, if it increases, of course, we're going to follow whatever the guidelines and regulations for the department of transportation are. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm good. Thanks, man. Thanks, Dan. Can you hear me? Dan, Dan, can, Dan you can you hear me? Hear me? <laughs> yes, I can hear you, but you got a great echo with that one. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. <laughs> so in any case, I, I do have a, a couple things. Uh, first, a question. Um, I make the assumption that you can, uh, the applicant is providing for or has commercial insurance for the people uh, at this event center, uh, the type of events. Uh, there could be an accident or something of that nature. And uh, I think you are probably responsible to have that kind of insurance. Is that correct from either Tom or Todd? Yeah, uh, um, so yeah, that would be correct. And also uh, I'm trying to remember the exact name of the uh, equine um, statutes that exempt um, 
Oh, that's right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. When participating in organized uh, activities such as this. So it's, it's a known dangerous activity. So liability and risk uh, is assumed by the participant under Colorado law. But Mr. Messer is sitting there. I, I can almost assure you there's there is sufficient uh, insurance on this, but that's something I'll follow up on it and get an answer if you guys want it. So, uh, and the second part of what I have to ask about, um, I was listening, uh, and I think Mr. Van Sands is, is correct, uh, but as a condition of approval, um, something worded to the effect should the traffic increase above a certain uh, level as negotiated by the Messers and Elbert County uh, Road and Bridge or a public works department um, that uh, you would be open and responsible to do the XL and decel lanes. I, I just jotted that down quickly. Uh, it's not really a good legalese way of putting it, but uh, I think that if that was in there, it would allay some of the fears that we're hearing uh, out there. So it, it would, if you have a suggestion, mine was, you know, that you, if the traffic should increase above a certain level that you negotiate with our Elbert County, that you will uh, be uh, responsible for those XL and D-cell lanes. Well, it's, and, and no disrespect, and, and that's a good question. I understand your concerns, but it's actually not something you yeah. can negotiate. It's a required regulation. It is a required regulation, sure. but but, but uh, the traffic level is a fixed number that triggers this XL and D cell lanes? It is. It's uh, depending on the time of day. So there's the, the peak times. Um, and when the traffic is the heaviest, if it's more than 24 vehicles per hour uh, during peak times, um, and it, it also, it depends on the day. It, it's all bro broken down in that report, and it's, it's, it's actually pretty complicated. Um, but um, there are standards, specific standards that are set, um, and... It's, it's 24 uh, cars per hour during peak times um, that are participating in activities at the arena would trigger that. So once we go above that 24 cars per hour threshold, um, and, but then also that's, that's entrance. So that would be turn lanes, either eastbound or westbound. Eastbound would be center, um, uh, westbound, of course, would be a right-hand turn lane. But then also there's a different standard for um, that they look at for like when events conclude. So if events conclude at one specific time, the threshold cannot get above 101 vehicles per hour exiting that event. If it does, then what we're, ha what we're looking at there are the merge lanes at 37 and 86. Um, so yeah, there, there are very specific numbers, um, but I'd, I'd be happy to put something in writing that once that threshold is reached, then we, we have to, um, and it, it's not just that number of vehicles, it's that number of vehicles 30 times per year or more. So it, I, now I understand, but the reason I said a certain level is because I did not know what that certain level was. And if you would put that as in writing uh, that we could use as a condition, uh, I'd be open to that uh, so that it would uh, right now as condition number four says the applicant will comply with CDOT's final determination. But uh, CDOT isn't going to be looking at it as much as Elbert County is going to be looking at it at some date in the future. And uh, so I just wanted that, you know, if there comes a question, traffic counts or something, I wanted it that Elbert County has a leg to stand on <clears throat> to get this uh, moving again. And it's not just, you know, a dead issue. Sure. What we, what we can do is... Um, the engineer was very, you know, he, he explained it uh, 
I, I have dealt with a few traffic engineering situations, but most of it involves speed. Um, but he was pretty clear in the report that he wrote up and I think we can write something up as a condition that if we exceed um, um, the standards as set forth in the report, then uh, continued operations would be contingent on the installation of, of merge and turn lanes uh, pursuant to CDOT standards. And these are CDOT standard, uh, you know, uh, shall we say standards? That's yes, no, they, no, they are. They, they are. are. Okay, they are. So that that takes care of it. Uh, other than that, everything is covered with eighteen in the list. And if we could uh, come up with something simple on that, I, I'd greatly appreciate it. Uh, I will have everyone something by end of day tomorrow. Okay, so Danny, uh, that's all I have. I I've looked this over, and uh, I think it's a good thing for Elbert County. Uh, I like, uh, and that nice lady, Julia, that spoke earlier is absolutely correct. For years, we need places for our young people to go. Good, clean events like this, especially in Elbert County, are, are rec we want them. Let's just put it that way. It's our county. This is our county. This is what we do. So, Dan, are you uh, suggesting that we have a, an, an additional condition? Yeah, I actually, that's what I was saying. So I, I, I said, should the traffic increase above levels set by CDOT, I can get rid of the certain levels, and that uh, they would be, they are, they shall or shall uh, comply with the standards, uh, standard CDOT standards. So, however, uh, my wording is pretty. You know, like I no, said, no, 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 no. I understand. I understand what you're saying, and that's that's easy to do. Okay, uh, and, uh, so we Todd, make it a Todd, stipulation so the and you guys can present that to the board of county commissioners, and I think this is a good thing. Okay, right. Christina, do you, do, do you have what he's trying to say? So we need, have, have the, we need to have the verbiage for that condition. I think we already have it pretty much. It, it's kind of interesting. The uh, one that condition actually almost states. Right now I have it written as, should the traffic counts exceed that of the traffic letter prepared February 9th, 2021, then continued operation is contingent on meeting the standards set forth by CDOT. Todd? That's uh, I couldn't have worded it much better myself, actually. Um, I was just going to refer to the report and the standards set forth by the engineer. Um, but I, I'm, I'm good with that. If Mr. Messer is good with that. I'm good with it. Would you, would you put up the final up. three conditions? I'm going to put it up here. Hang on one second. It's number 20 on the screen here. Okay. That, that's that's it. Good. Okay. I, yeah. Dan, are you, you good with that? Are you good with that? I'm good with it. Are you? I, I am no, good I think with it's a good, it. No, it's a good, it's a good point, and we can deal with that. Okay. Um, any other questions? Here. Yeah. yeah um, I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't know who can answer this, but um, Todd, maybe you can. Is there a provision as well in in the specs for the C dot? for a certain number of accidents occurrence on that corner that would make them make um, them I, have I, a, I, a, a, an out acceleration deceleration i can tell you this um so that's kind of how walmart works uh and which is why i'm really surprised um uh when we haven't um it, it's not just excel and decel lanes 
Um, it's also uh, the number of accidents is a, a determining factor for uh, traffic signals. Uh, I know Walmart specifically has been sued when they build a super center like ours and there's no traffic center there or, or there's no traffic lights there and accidents occur on a regular basis. Um, so it's cheaper for Walmart usually just to install yeah, traffic. traffic signals. So yeah. that is a factor that's out there. That wasn't considered in this because we don't even meet the minimum thresholds for a turn lane yet. So I don't, it, it wasn't addressed in our report and I would assume that that's why. But I, yeah, I, I can tell you, I, I can tell you from experience, <laughs> Walmart has experienced that because uh, um, like I said, anything to do with traffic is expensive. I mean, most people, I never imagined those, the addition of those four lanes would cost in excess of a million dollars until I, start, until I started uh, doing some research on this particular project. Um, so those, are war those are warrants though, Todd, right? Excuse me? Those are warrants. I mean, how many accidents occur? Sure. That's what they um, do. So, yeah, I, unfortunately, it's kind of the American way. It's one of those things we'd have to be responsive. Uh, I'm sure there's a study they can do based on the number of vehicles and get an estimate of how many accidents they think would occur. Um, but it, it's not one that was done at this point because we, we haven't even met the minimum thresholds for a turn lane yet. Right. Okay, thanks. Jeff, you good? Okay. Questions? Go ahead. Ready for a motion? No, I got the first. Okay, go ahead. Thanks, Lee. I have one more. And you know, if I can just follow up on that, look, I, I can tell you, I, I've known the Messers now for quite some time, uh, and several of their family members, and and I can tell you this, um, Ralph Messer is one of the best, most genuine people I've ever met in my life, and I can tell you right now, the last thing um, he wants on his conscience is someone getting hurt because traffic was too heavy attending an activity at his event. I, I can promise you guys this right now. He is not the kind of person that will allow that to happen. Okay. okay. Thanks, Todd. Thank you. Um, I have one question and I think you can answer pretty quickly. I think it was already addressed in the application. However, you're looking at a, a assembly occupancy rating that may require more more to be done inside that building. I think based on because they'll base it on the occupancy of the building. I think you mentioned in there that you're prepared to to do what it what's needed to maintain that or to gain that uh, assembly occupancy rating, correct? If, so I, yeah, I mean, if, if the county codes dictate that that's what we need, um, that's, that's what we'll do. Um, it, it's, it's like Tom said earlier, the, the function and the use of this building hasn't changed in 15 years. Um, the events, um, yeah, you know, we there was a mistake made and there was one big event held there. And like like Tom said, the event grew much larger than it was was ever planned. And it was completely un, unintended what occurred there. Um, but if if we get to looking at this thing and the, the county code um, and the fire codes dictate that we have to, um, recodified this thing to receive a, an occupancy an occupancy certificate. Then that's that's what we'll do. Um, yeah, that's, and if we have to spend some money, we'll, we'll spend some money to bring it up to code. Okay, that's what I that's what I kind of wanted to hear because I believe they're going to base your occupancy on the number of people that can 
that can be in the building. So yeah, you're exactly right. Yeah. Yeah, it's so, my understanding that Deputy Chief Ogburn was was working on that. We had a we had I think one or two visits from him um, immediately after our last meeting, and it was my understanding he was actually working on occupancy signs. So whatever uh, the deputy chief has determined on that, um, the building will they won't exceed those occupancy uh, thresholds. Uh, and if we do, like I said, you know, we'll do what we have to do to bring things up to code. Um, but it was my understanding, and I haven't been out there since, that uh, the deputy chief was working on that. Okay. Well, it'll also go through the building department before you get your CEO as to what will be required for an assembly occupancy, I sure. believe is what you're, you're requesting, right? Well, yeah. Yeah. Um, and I'll, I'll, I'll work with uh, Faith at the building department on that because I think we have a little bit of room, but I'll work with her. I'm, okay, I, I work I just, with her every day. Okay, I just wanted to be sure you were prepared because I think you're going to come in with a higher occupancy than what, uh, what you believe, and it may require more things being done inside. And you were open, you stated you were open to meeting the requirements that they, they, they have. So... Todd, you answered my questions. Yeah, so I, I hear, I understand, I understand everyone's concerns, and and I can tell you this: we're we're not going to do anything in violation of county codes. So whatever we have to do to remain we'll code compliant, we'll do it or we'll shut it down. That's I mean, it's just really that simple. Um, the investors aren't the time to try to skirt codes and, and, and get around things. Uh, we're dealing with the safety of quite a few people when it comes to this arena. So um, I, I can tell you guys this, we're not going to violate county codes. Okay. And, God, thank and you. You, guys, you guys know me, you guys know me, and I wouldn't <laughs> give you nonsense on that. Got it, Tom. Thank you. Okay. Um, shouldn't that be a condition that uh, all requirements of the new certificate of occupancy? No? What he stated here, it's, it's already okay. in there. Is it? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. Good. All right. Thank you, boys. Motion. Thanks. You ready for? We're ready for a motion. Okay. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, make... I can make that motion. Please, Dan. Yeah. Uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to uh, recommend, uh, we send a recommendation of approval for the Messer uh, Event Center SU-19-0099 uh, subject to conditions 1 through 21 uh, as published. Dan, that should actually be 20. 20. Oh, I saw you had 20 and 21, so you recombined that up. Yeah, that was uh, alternative language there. Okay, so subject to the conditions 1 through 20. Or do you want me to restate the whole thing? Ah, uh, you're good. We've got it. It's reported. Yep. We have a second. I'll second that. Okay, hearing a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you very much. Tom, thank you, Todd. Thanks, everyone. Nice and, again, you, thanks Todd. for all your patience. Thanks, Todd. I'll call you tomorrow. I got one more meeting. I got one more meeting coming up. Thank you, Grant. <laughs> You guys be careful. Thank you all. Hey, Greg. Yes, Tom. We got another meeting coming, right? No, no, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> okay, so, our next, our oh, next thanks meeting. a lot. <laughs> all right, let's go right into the next one. We've got rock bottom propane, SUR, SU20-0068. That's me.
All right, here we go. All right. Hey, bud. So we're taking a look at rock bottom propane, special use by review, SU-20-0068. This is a request for a special use by review to allow for a bulk propane storage facility, 78,000 gallon maximum located on approximately 0.95 acres of a larger 60.15 acre property located at 13618 County Road 166, Kiowa. Data pertinent to this case, the property owners are Dustin and Jessica Sutton. The applicant is Tom Maroney. The size of the property is 0.95 acres of a larger 60.15 acre property. Pre-application meeting was held on July 16th of 2020. The community meeting was waived in the pre-application meeting. Formal application was submitted and deemed complete on October 21st, 2020. The 21-day referral process began October 29th and ended November 19th of 2020. Planning Commission is tonight, September 16th, 2021, and Board of County Commissioners will hear this case on March 10th, 2021. Notice of public hearing was mailed to property owners within 1,320 feet of the subject property boundary on January 15th, 2021. Public notice sign was posted on property July, uh, excuse me, January 29th, 2020, and notice was published in the Elbert County News on January 21st, 2020. Here we have the notarized certification of mailing, the notarized sign posting, and the affidavit of publication. Here's an aerial map. It's um, not too terribly far from the intersection of County Road 166 and County Road 53. Here from this zoning map, you can see that all of the properties in the surrounding area are zoned Agricultural A. Here is the proposed SUR exhibit. It does outline the special use area. Um, that was a specific request by the assessor's office. The responding referral agents, agencies were, um, excuse me, the applicant was sent to referral agencies per the Elbert County zoning regulations. And the responding referral agencies were the Colorado Division of Natural Resources, no objection. The Kiowa Fire District, no objection. Intermountain Rural Electric Association, no objection. Kiowa Conservation District, no objection. The Colorado Geologic Survey, no objection. Philip 66, Kinder Morgan, and New Star Energy, all pipeline companies have no objection. Notable referral comments, one of which um, is an excerpt from a letter dated November 3rd, 2020 from Wendley Dickinson of the Colorado Division of Water Resources. She says, quote, no water use is proposed for the propane facility. The submitted material references an existing domestic well on the property that will not be used for the facility. So long as no water is required to supply the business, our office has no comments on the proposal. However, if a well is to be used to supply the business, the applicant should clarify the well permit number. Any wells located on the property must be used in accordance with the terms and conditions on the well permit. Staff comment, the applicant has stated that no water will be used for any uses associated with the bulk propane storage facility. And another notable comment was from Fire Chief Jerry Lemansky, dated October 31st, 2020. Address marker recommended, defensible space around propane tanks, all weather access surface. Business has been inspected for fire code violations with none found, no fire impact fees due. Impact fees for Elbert County, staff has determined that impact fees are not applicable as no structures are being built as part of this use. Special use by review are evaluated utilizing the criteria listed in Article 3, E5, A through H of the Elbert County Zoning Regulations. Criteria A, whether the use is in harmony and compatible with the surrounding area and neighborhood. Staff comment, this use is compatible with the surrounding agricultural and low density residential land uses in the surrounding area. Criteria B, whether the use will not have an undue burden on available infrastructure. 
staff comment, this use does not use any water and uses and uses very minimal amounts of electricity. Our uh, condition, or excuse me, criteria C, whether the use will not unduly increase traffic congestion or burden the existing road system. Staff comment, it is not expected that the proposed use will unduly increase traffic congestion on Kiowa Bennett Road or County Road 166. The traffic impact letter produced by professional engineer Dave Rubble indicates that no adverse impacts to the surrounding network are anticipated should the proposed special use be approved. Criteria D, whether the use will not cause significant air, odor, water, noise, or light pollution. Staff comment, the use being proposed will not cause significant air, odor, water, noise, or light pollution. Furthermore, the applicant has expressed a commitment to utilizing best practices to mitigate noise and light pollution. Criteria E, whether all sanitation requirements will be met. Staff comment, Stacey Reinhardt of Elbert County Public Health has indicated that portable restrooms can be utilized for this use. Criteria F, whether the use will be adequately landscaped, buffered, or screened. Staff comment, staff has determined that the use being proposed does not require screening. Criteria G, whether the use will not otherwise be detrimental to the health, safety, or welfare of the present or future inhabitants of Elbert County. Staff comment, the facilities for this use have been reviewed extensively by Kiowa Fire District, and it has been determined by Chief Lemansky that this use will not be detrimental to the health, safety, or welfare of the present or future inhabitants of Elbert County. And last, criteria H, whether supplemental standards are met for specific uses as applicable, and there are no supplemental standards for this type of land use. In addition to the Elbert County zoning regulations, staff reviewed the application against the Elbert, Elbert County comprehensive plan and finds that this is in support of um, section E G six, that the county should support the development of agriculture, commerce, industry, education, healthcare, natural resource development, tourism, and residential growth. Findings and recommendation. One, it does um, it is in general conformance with the Elbert County Comprehensive Plan. It does meet the criteria for approval in the Elbert County zoning regulations. The Elbert County subdivision regulations are not applicable to this application. And it is compatible with existing and allowed, allowed land uses in the surrounding area. And five, it will not result in significant impact to the health, safety, and welfare of the residents and landowners of the surrounding area. Based on these, the staff recommends that the Planning Commission and Board of County Commissioners approve SU-20-0068, subject to the following conditions. One, the applicant will be required to remove the public hearing sign within seven days of a, of a decision by the Board of County Commissioners. Two, the special use by review shall not become effective until all fees are paid, conditions of approval are met, and the special use by review exhibit is recorded. Three, recordation of all appropriate documentation is to occur within 180 days of approval by the Board of County Commissioners. Four, the applicant will receive the appropriate building permits for each of the three propane tanks at the time of installation. And five, a commercial well permit shall be obtained if water is to be used for the commercial uses associated with this bulk propane storage facility. Six, all outdoor lighting fixtures will be properly shielded from adjoining and adjacent properties and any street right of way. And seven, the Elbert County Zoning Compliance Official is to verify that all conditions of approval are met prior to operation. Thank you. Thank you, Greg. Tom, do you have anything to add? No, not a thing. It's pretty straightforward. Okay. You got any questions? Okay, I think do we have Will, you guys, do you have anything to add? Okay, we'll go around the table real quick. Uh then well, let me see if we have any citizen comments out there or anything that okay. uh, cool. On Zoom, do you see anybody on Zoom? I'm Greg? not I'm not seeing anybody yet. Give me one second here. Yeah, I've got a comment. Go ahead. Can you, can you hear me? Yes, sir. 
Go right ahead. Name, name and address if you could. You bet. My name is Tim Goodwin. I own All American Propane, 8200 Cherrywood Circle in Kiowa. Just uh, kind of concerned how, Tom, uh, you helped me get my uh, my place set up quite a few years ago. Yes, sir. And uh, you, you remember all the stuff that we had to go through? Yes, sir. And they uh, held my feet to the fire every step of the way. I know. So I guess my question is, how can these guys go ahead and just open this up, put a story sink on their property, and just uh, rock and roll without having any approval? Hey, Tim. Yeah. It's in the middle of nowhere. Well, yeah, I get that. I get that. It's in the middle of, hey, hey dude, it's in the middle of nowhere. Mm -hmm. All right. I mean, I, I know it's competition for you. And, you know, you're my friend. I mean, I I helped you do your your thing. Yeah, you sure right? did. Yeah. I mean, but um, it's a long way from where you're at. Okay. Well, now let's talk about fire flow. Then fire department. I mean, you have a cat catastrophic event out there. Um, uh, well, we okay, Tim. Yeah. Kyle Fire, their referral agency, right? I mean, and they said we have no problem. And so, I mean, have you been out there? Oh, yeah. Um, I've been by there a couple times. No, I mean, it's, you know what? Okay. When I drove out there to put the sign up, I was like, this place is in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> it is. There's no question about it. <laughs> I mean, uh, what? Maybe are you tanking and blow up? Tank and blow up? Is it going to All right. Is can it, I? Is, um, it gonna, is it tank and blow up? I mean, it, it's happened before. Not that often. It's happened before. It's happened in before. Okay. You and okay. I, hey, Tim, you and I went through the same thing. Okay, dude. So give me a break here. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, they held my feet to the fire all the way through it, though. It just seemed like these guys just. Well, I, and I had your okay. butt the whole way. <laughs> yeah, you did. We, Tom, else? Tim, yes. could you guys yeah. please? If you guys want to work okay, with all right, all right. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Talk I'm with sorry. each other. I'm sorry. <laughs> that was good. That's no, good. you know what? All right. That's all it's I wanted to say. Of, it's just, no, Jim, hey, thank you. It's kind of um, fun to talk to Let me see if him. anybody else, we have any other comments. <laughs> okay, I have a Do question. Have anybody on Zoom? Hold on. Let's see if we have anybody on Zoom. Everybody, anybody else who have any comments? Do you see anybody else, Greg? You know what, if you have a comment, please unmute yourself and uh, go ahead and introduce yourself, please. And if you can't unmute yourself, please raise your hand using the uh, reactions tool on the uh, toolbar. <laughs> Danny, I'm not seeing any, thank okay. you. Okay, all right, go around the room. Questions here? Yep. Anything? Jason? Nope. Okay. I do have a question. This uh, property already has one tank on it that I saw, a rather large tank. And uh, is this just to uh, make that one tank uh, approved and add more? Or should yeah, it? Yeah, they, they want to add I'm, two more. I'm not, I'm, I'm not finished yet. I'm not finished yet. Okay, sorry. I apologize. So the SUR, is it correcting an existing situation and allowing them to expand or how's it? Yes, yeah, so let me clarify. So, um, okay, we, thank you, Greg. Yes, so we um, had a former um, precedent of allowing SURs to operate before having their, their full approval and we've stopped doing that. So in the pre-application meeting, we did indicate that they would be able to get their operation going. Um, that that should have not been the case. However, that's not the applicant's um, mistake. Yeah. And, and also they have uh, an 18,000 gallon tank existing and are proposing two additional 30,000 gallon propane tanks. Dan, questions? Yeah, I do. Um, actually, I got two. Uh, first question is directed at staff. Um, 
Isn't it not true that address markers are required throughout Elbert County, that they should be of a reflective material and uh, on a red on uh, white background? Are they, they're colorful? It's a red background with white numbers on it. Is that not a county standard? I'm not familiar with that, Christina. Do you have um, can I can I jump in here? Yeah, go ahead. Can I jump in, Dan? Yep, please do. That's a that's a, a fire requirement, not a county fire. But okay. but by saying that, uh, as far as I mean, all the houses around my subdivision all have these red reflective markers. The fire Shemansky the. Uh, uh, I probably misspell, uh, pronounced his name, uh, but the fire chief for Kiowa recommended an address marker. If this is located in the middle of nowhere, uh, do we not have regulations that state people will have their address clearly marked? I, I believe it already does, but if that's the case, uh, I, I, that's, a fire, I, that's a fire marshal deal. Okay, uh, this is uh, actually directed at staff. I'm sorry, Tom. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. I, I didn't get the specific question. I'm sorry. He's asking well, if, uh, if we have a code or requirement for the, the marking on address marking on the location. You know, that could be a building code, but we don't have any zoning regulations on that. It's not in zoning, it's in building. It's in building. So as a condition of approval, uh, I think we ought to add the fire chief's recommendation uh, because he, I did not go to this particular site. And uh, by all descriptions, it's in the middle of nowhere. Um, somehow the, they need to have that address marker, the correct address marker. I, when I first originally moved to the county, uh, my, the uh, uh, developer gave me an address and it was wrong and the county mapper came back and lady later said, no, your, your address is not that, it's something completely different. We had to, you know, put a new marker out. And well, that's, yeah, that's 911, that's 911 and, and, and we can do that. It's a grid type reference so that a fire truck or an emergency responder can find a place. I think it's already in the I can do that all day long. And the other problem. Question, I believe actually Dan, that's in the condition. It is. Yeah. First of all, okay, the 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 homeowner or the property owner doesn't put those up. The fire department does. Okay. Uh, so why is the chief putting a recommendation to put an address marker on it? Maybe and why, that's what I'm trying to do. I don't want to be redundant. So, so Dan, um, it, that was actually in the pre-application meeting. He's, he stated that and then also followed it up with a formal referral comment. That was simply a recommendation that the applicant has agreed to do, um, but it was a recommendation. I don't believe that was a requirement it can be a requirement, Greg. It's no problem. Yeah. I'll put a sign up. I just remember specifically from the pre-application meeting, he said that's that's you know, that's your decision. Right. He said it's but it's okay. It's no big deal. No pull cool enough. Okay. That was it was the first one and it it would have brought by seeing the chief actually say an address marker recommended, it, it just was a red flag for me. I'm going. Oh, I thought we had a standard. So anyway, let's move on to my second point uh, on this. And uh, I need to ask, and I think the other gentleman uh, has actually started to go down that pathway and I'm gonna ask, when we are dealing with hazardous materials, the county has deferred to following various standard regulations fire codes and uh, state regulations to uh, truncate and make it simpler to for an applicant to know what they have to do. Uh, this is a, definitely a hazardous, uh, you know, propane tanks are 
uh, you know, having a uh, UN code, a, you know, hazardous code number yeah, like yes yeah, yeah. and others. And uh, do we, in the county, do we, is that part of the re, uh, referral process, Greg? Do we follow that? We're, you're dealing with hazardous materials. Uh, you know, all the referral agents that are in the zoning regulations were referred. Yes, not the state was not one of those. How about uh, how how do we handle um, hazardous materials? When I for thirty five years as I flew for an airlines, I had a hazardous material book, and there were all kinds of regulations from the federal level that somebody had to follow somewhere along the way yes. to protect the public. Right. 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 The Uniform Fire Code was updated in 2016. I think we're on that version. Yes, D Danny's correct. Uh, Chief Lemansky has reviewed this extensively. Well, yeah, I, I hear that. But uh, let's say I wanted to set up a chemical plant in Elbert County. Do we have anything to deal with that? Do, isn't there, don't we follow some standardized regulation somewhere? The for uniform fire material. code, yes. The uniform fire code adopted in 2016. Could be a yep. fire code. It, they, it could also be chlorine gas. It could be some other, you know, hazardous material. So I'm, I'm just asking if we have uh, a you know, something we take for guidelines when we, because I am a citizen volunteer and I don't have the expertise. And I'm looking for you guys to have some uh, manuals that you follow about this. And if Elber County doesn't have them, it raises some questions. And, and, you know, Dan, that's a really good question. Great question. Okay. But we can only do what we can do. Oh, I'm not against this, Tom. It's, it's, I know it's, that. I know that. I know that, buddy. I, I know I'm that. Just asking to get I don't understand what you're saying. It's 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 a hard question to answer. Yeah, it's a hard I, question to answer. Everything I did with hazardous materials, I had to write down in books, and and we had to protect the public. And if we had a spill or something, depending on what it was. And, and it could be dangerous in many different ways. And propane, it can can be dangerous if it's mishandled. Oh, I I agree with you one hundred percent. But all we can do is we can just count on what the state says and what the county says. And I don't know what else I can oh, do. Yeah, I, I'm so that's why I'm asking county, not you, because okay, right but now, thank you. I, I wanted to know what we're following so that I feel confident that we have followed some kind of guidelines and uh, are passing this on. Well, I think That's they have, I, was asking, I think they have. Is, I think they have. Any... Ta or, excuse me, uh, Dan, it's the Uniform Fire Code. That, that's okay. the law of the, of the land here. Okay, you're following the uniform. Did you apply the standards to it before you put this to us? We sent it out to referral to Chief Lemansky and left it up to the professionals. Okay. Thank you. You know what, dude? That's all we could do. <laughs> Any other questions? And I appreciate you bringing this up. Anybody else? Good. Good. Anything else? Nope. Okay, Dan? Nope. Andy, good? Hey, motion, please. So, Greg, he said it's okay to put in the address requirement. Okay. Yes. Let me, uh, that's Let me fine. bring this up real quick. Yep. Put it in. You could, you could just say it, uh, the Kiowa Fire Department concerns per letter. Yeah. One more time, Peter. 
the Kiowa Fire Department concerns per their letter? The Kiowa Fire Department recommendations will be followed. Sure, that'll work. Yeah, that's good. Hey, Dan, are you okay with that? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah, if, if, if the, the, it says recommendations, if they're going to follow the recommendations, they'll put it up under dress mark. Yeah, we'll do that. It's no problem. No problem, bro. Can do that. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. okay. I Greg? got it. Okay. Okay. I'll make the, the motion. I'll make a motion that we send to the Port of County Commissioners for approval rock bottom propane SU 20 0068 for a special use by review subject to the eight conditions that we currently have. I'll second that. There are eight, There's eight. Okay. All right. Want to be sure we had the right appropriate number of That's conditions? That's right. Okay. So we've got a motion. We've got a motion from Peter, a second from Dan. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Unanimous. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. Thank you for the, the long night. Sorry about that. Thanks, Tom. You guys all take care. All right. <laughs> Talk to you. Bye bye. No, thanks. Thank you. Greg. See you guys. <laughs> thanks, Greg. Sure thing, Tom. Thank you, Greg. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, I think we have one more. We do. UC Tower. And that's URSU 20.0076 SAC Wireless. That's correct. Okay. It looks like that last condition froze my computer. <laughs> so. Do we need a... Do we need a break for a minute? I, I, yeah, this would be a good time to take a break. Yeah, let's let's just take, if we could recess for just about five minutes. Okay, we're uh, we're back up and running. So when we're back from break, we're ready to go here. Properties along certain projects. And your, the intent was to make it easier to split properties and create commercial properties in that. Really, that's what to shortcut it as. And I hate to use the term shortcut, but there's a, a, a refined process in getting to providing a piece of property and setting it up for. Development and, and it's economic development. Right. It was also, and it included 86, it included part of Lake Kings and Hills, and there was also in the, in the EDC, there was a way you could petition to apply that EDC to other properties. So, what road was one, and that was virtual. They shouldn't be able to. I didn't know. And, and you, you can't. Well, I can go out and buy this land out here and start doing this. I can do any dang thing I want on it. I, I'd like to. I'm in it. 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 Well, there are on what? what? On what? what? No.
We're ready. Hey, Greg. Hey, Dan. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry to put you on the spot on that last one. It's just that I'm trying to understand how some things work in the county. Sure. And, uh, no, I get you. I appreciate you asking that, actually. And the address markers one was surprised the heck out of me because I haven't been anywhere in the western county where I don't see the red reflective sign with the numbers in it. But quite a few people, they're starting to disappear. The fire department may have put them out years ago. I don't know who paid for it, but we 
you had to put out an official address so they could find it. 911 and you know, the usual sheriff. Right. Oh. We got a applicant representative in Chicago, so we'll we'll get him. Uh, you got him on the line. Yep, he's here. Okay, good. All right, let's go through our. Greg, are you presenting? I sure am. Okay. Thank you, Danny. Last, we're taking a look at SAC Wireless Special Use by Review, SU-20-0076. This is a request for a special use by review to permit a 76 foot wireless telecommunication, telecommunications tower on property located at 38555 County Road 29, Elizabeth. The property owners are Freddie and Mary Hudson. The applicant is SAC Wireless on behalf of AT&T. The size of the uh, SUR area is 711 feet excuse me, 711 and a half feet of a larger 138.3 acre property. A pre-application meeting was held July 16th of 2020. A community meeting was held September 15th of 2020. And a formal application was submitted and deemed complete on December 8th, 2020. The referral process began December 15th, 2020 and ended January 5th, 2021. Planning commission is tonight, February 16th, 2021. And the Board of County Commissioners will hear this case on March 10th, 2021. Mail notices were sent to owners within 1,320 feet of the subject property boundary on January 18th, 2021. Sign was posted on property January 28th, 2021. And the newspaper notice was published in the Elbert, Elbert County News on January 21st, 2021. Here we have a notarized certification of mailing. Here's the notarized certification of signposting and the affidavit of publication. Here's the vicinity aerial map. It's, you can see that it's just Northwest of the County Road 29 and County Road 154 intersection. The zoning in this area is primarily agricultural, including the site. However, to the North and, uh, excuse me, North and West is zoned PUD, that is the Miller Ranch subdivision, and to the south is zoned agriculture residential. Here's a, one of the pages of the SUR exhibit showing the elevation of the uh, tower. The application was sent to referral agencies per the Elbert County zoning regulations. The responding referral agencies were the Federal Aviation Agency, no objection. I have a comment that I'll reference here in a second. Intermountain Rural Electric Association had no objection. The Elbert County Building Department has no objection. Elbert County Public Health has no objection. And the Elizabeth Fire Protection District has no objection. Notable referral comments were from the FAA, from Steve Phillips, from a letter dated December 16th, 2020. I would encourage the county to ask for proof of a current determination of no hazard to air navigation. The applicant has provided this documentation. Another notable comment was from Intermountain Rural Electric Association, Brooks Kaufman, in a letter dated October 31st, 2020, said that the association approves a special use permit. The association will require any necessary utility easements during the association's electrical design phase. Impact fees for this were calculated based on the um, former impact fee schedule. Um, so this will need to be addressed. However, based on those former impact fees, they were calculated to come out to a transportation fee of $26.43 and then a non-residential growth impact fee of $6,088.48 cents a grand total of $6,114.91. Is 
special use by reviews are evaluated utilizing the, the criteria listed in Article 3, E5, A through H of the Elbert County Zoning Regulations. Criteria A, whether the use is in harmony and compatible with the surrounding area and neighborhood. Staff comment, this use is compatible with the surrounding agricultural and low density residential land uses in the surrounding area. B, whether the use will not have an undue burden on available infrastructure. Staff comment, this use does not use any water. The applicant has agreed to provide Intermountain Rural Electric Association, IREA, with any necessary utility easements during the association's electrical design phase. Criteria C, whether the use will not unduly increase traffic congestion or burden the existing road system. Staff comment, this wireless telecommunication facility is unmanned and it, it is therefore not expected that the proposed use will unduly increase traffic congestion on County Road 154, County Road 29, or County Road 33. Criteria D, whether the use will not cause significant air, odor, water, noise, or light pollution. Staff comment, this wireless telecommunications tower will not cause, cause significant air, odor, water, noise, or light pollution. Furthermore, this tower will not be lit. Criteria E, whether all sanitation requirements will be met. Staff comment, Stacy Reinhardt of Elbert County Public Health has indicated that restrooms are not required for this use as the facility is unmanned. Criteria F, whether the use will, un will be adequately landscape buffered and screened. Staff comment, staff has determined that the use being proposed does not require screening beyond the Ponderosa Pines that are currently on site. Criteria G, whether the use will not otherwise be detrimental to the health, safety, or welfare of the present or future inhabitants of Elbert County. Staff comment. Staff has determined that the use will not be detrimental to the health, safety, or welfare of the present or future inhabitants of Elbert County. And H, whether supplemental standards are met for specific uses as applicable. And staff comment. Staff has determined that the supplemental standards for the use have been met. These supplemental standards, as outlined in Article VHB5 of the current Elbert County Zoning Regulations, are as follows. Standard one, the facility is architecturally and visually compatible with surrounding land uses, building structures, and vegetation in the area are those likely to exist under the terms of the underlying zone district. Criteria two, the facility is designed to be compatible with the surrounding areas. Criteria three, existing vegetation has been preserved or improved and disturbed and disturbances of the site has been minimized unless such disturbances of to vegetation and topography results in less visual impact to the surrounding area. Criteria four, the applicant has demonstrated that the proposed site fits into the overall network of service that is pro provided by the applicant. Criteria five, the facility meets the definition of utility service facility cell site and other applicable standards of the zone district on which it is located. And six, a landscaping plan or solid wood fence may be required to screen or buffer the structural tower. In addition to the Elbert County zoning regulations, staff reviewed the application against the Elbert County comprehensive plan and has determined that it is in support of EG6 stating that the county should support the development of agriculture, commerce, industry, education, healthcare, natural resource development, tourism, and residential growth. Findings and recommendation. Staff finds that it is generally in conformance with the Elbert County Comprehensive Plan. It does meet the criteria for approval of the Elbert County Zoning Regulations. The Elbert County subdivision regula regulations are not applicable to this application. It is compatible with existing and allowed land uses in the surrounding area, and it will not re result in significant impact to the health, safety, and welfare of the residents and landowners of the surrounding area. And based on these findings, staff recommends that the Planning Commission and Board of County Commissioners approve SU-20-0076, subject to the following conditions. Condition one, the applicant will be required to remove the public hearing sign within seven days of the decision by the Board of County Commissioners. Two, the special use by review shall not become effective until all fees are paid, conditions of approval are met, and the special use by review exhibit is recorded. And three, 
Recordation of all appropriate documentation is to occur within 180 days of approval by the Board of Cal County Commissioners. Thank you. Greg, can you show that uh, a letter of uh, determination, no hazard air navigation? Can you bring that up? You know what, let me, uh, let me bring that up for you. Um, if you. If you have other questions, go ahead. I'm gonna bring that up, give me one second. Hey, Joe, are you on the line by chance? Yeah. If you have that handy and you want to share your screen, um, I'm also trying to pull it up here. Okay, let me look for it. All right, I think I got it. Share screen. Let's see if you guys can uh, can see it. Can you see it? I believe it's loading. Yep. Okay. Hang on one second. There it is. Hmm. Do you want me to scroll through it? If you would, please, thank you. Go back to the top. That one section there calls out that the uh, there is not a need for lighting. Um, however, if marking lighting are accomplished on a voluntary basis, we recommend it be installed in accordance with the FAA advisory circular, but um, the gist of it is, is that it's not required. Yeah, and there, there will be no lighting on the top. Cool, thanks, Peter. Okay, good. Let's see. Do we have the applicant? Yes, Joe, do you have anything to add? Um, stop sharing. Yeah, um, just quickly, I uh, just want to clarify that this is a comment project. Um, I know before it was said that it was an SAC wireless project, um, and I'm an authorized agent who, that works for SAC wireless on behalf of comment. So just want to make that clarification there. Um, and we're proposing to upgrade the existing 57 foot uh, wooden tower with the new 76 foot monopole. And this is going to add first net um, to the new tower and then 
we will transfer the existing equipment, ComNet equipment onto the new tower. And um, FirstNet is, um, the FirstNet's uh, goal is to provide first responders with priority access to wireless communication services on a single network, uh, enabling increased coordination among first responder agencies and decreased response times. Mm -hmm. And that's, um, you know, it's new tower, um, more structurally sound, and will help with, uh, you know, first responding, first responders. Thank you. Uh, do we have any um, questions or comments on Zoom? I don't hear you, Danny. I'm sorry. I'm asking if we have any questions or comments from people on Zoom. Seeing none. Seeing great. I don't see any. So we'll go around. Okay. I've got one other question. Was uh, DECA sent a referral on this? They sure were. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Good. Um, I, I guess I'm just a little bit concerned about the fact that there wouldn't be a, a warning light on on the tower now that you're exceeding your increasing the height by another 20 feet. We've got a lot of private planes flying around this county. So, um, for the FAA, uh, it's not required for that for that height. Uh, so uh, there will be no no uh, lighting on the tower. Like I said, that's a concern. <laughs> I have I have light aircraft fly over my house every day. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is Jeremy Boone. I'm also with SAC Wireless here. Uh, uh, this is a relatively low tower when you're looking at. Uh, uh, what common towers you do see, this is not exceeding 100 feet. The FAA does indicate anything about 200 feet must require one. Um, and just due to the low proximity, we're not installing a, a, hundred, a 200 or 300 foot tower uh, relatively low. You don't necessarily see planes flying uh, at about the seven uh, at the 70 feet level. So that was more just why the FAA likely recommended it as such where no lighting would be required. Okay. Yeah, just a, like I said, we've got a lot of uh, uh, private aircraft pilots that fly around here and uh, a lot of the folks that live out here fly. Uh, they, it's an easy way to commute to Denver. So uh, anyway, all right, thank you. No problem. And, and, and just to add also to the record, the existing, there is the existing tower there that is not lighted. Yeah. Uh, and this is just a, uh, um, uh, increase of about 20 feet here. Yeah. Okay. Hey. Hey. Okay, Danny. Um, this is for staff. Um, you didn't show where it's sited on the property. You, you showed the property and uh, you know, we do have some stuff in there. Uh, this is a large property, but you don't want to site it next to a fence, and I don't know where it's sited. Okay. And, um, you know, the, it's an antenna ahead. support structure, and my question is, where is it sited on a property? Does it meet, you know, the, you know, distance from the property line and any other of those concerns that we put in the regs? It wasn't referenced. That's okay, Greg. I understand. Yeah, I'm, I'm having trouble pulling that up uh, with the Zoom open here. Um, it is, you know, what? it's, um, I actually measured it. It's, um, I want to say it's almost uh, three quarters of a mile to the nearest house. I, I believe I put that in the staff or report. Or property line. You know, the, the way that our, we wrote it is that the, and, and the antenna structure will never fall uh, but if a 200-foot tower within 100 foot of the property line is not acceptable. 
you know, but this is a smaller tower, but you didn't cite it. I, I just, I'm just telling you, I did not have the information. Okay. Seems to me we have a standard of, uh, uh, that we have to deal with, which it has to be one and a half times the height away from other structures or the property line. And that should have been referenced. Thanks for pointing that out. I appreciate it. That's all I have. As long as we're talking about the sign, um, the sign was on the left side of the driveway, but it was in the weeds. I finally found it. It wasn't up. It's the, the, the notice on? The, the notice for the meetings. Yep. Um, if, if, if I remember right, there was a fence line that went right along the uh, uh, driveway. Was that the edge of the property? So that was the closest point to a public road. Well, right, but it, I mean, it was on the left side, which I think is a different property. It should have been on the right side, which would have been this property. But at any rate, I, I finally found the sign. It was down in the weeds. Okay. Um, it had been up for quite some time. So um, I'm, I'm not sure if you saw the community meeting sign or the public notice sign. The, the public notice sign. Was it? Okay. I, th I think it was on the left side, which I think is a different property, but I, you know, It should have been on the right side for this particular property, whoever put it up. You know, I believe that um, there is still, I'm, I'm having trouble pulling up Google Earth here. I do believe there's still um, some of that property that is on that west side of the driveway. The south side. It, it's on the north side of, of the county road is the, is the property. Let me see here. The driveway runs uh, east west, doesn't it? Yeah, it should be east west for the. Twenty nine goes north south. Yeah, very good. It's east west until it makes a turn at the gate. Yeah. Is it? I just I thought it was a beyond the fence line. Got it cleaned out. I guess. Okay. All right. Questions. I can't hear you, Danny. Let me grab the mic. Can I have you? Did you get your questions answered? Yeah, and basically it was just that, you know, that should have been in the packet, uh, how we look at antenna support structures. And I was just reminding Greg of it, you know, and it wasn't, you know, when you're doing one of these things, uh, where is it located? Because that's necessary. That's all. Okay. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Dan. So, if we have any, if we don't have any other questions. All right. I don't have any. Nope. So, well, we'll a motion. Yeah, uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I'd like to make a motion that we recommend approval to the Board of County Commissioners SAC Wireless SU-20-0076 subject to the, and I want to make sure, three conditions uh, that were put in by staff. I'll second that. Okay. We've got a motion. We've got a second. Any further discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, Dan, thank you. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you. I appreciate it. Sir, thank you. Thank you, Joe. Never mm -hmm. online for this application. Thank you.
All right, I believe we have Ms. Cleaner, did we have a study session or something? Yeah, we had um, moved the review of the Planning Commission bylaws from a previous agenda onto tonight uh, for work session discussion. Uh, I don't know if everybody's had a chance to look over some of the edits I had. Um, I think what I had on there previously were a lot of cleanup since they hadn't been updated since 2016. And they referenced the old regulations. So there was a lot of, of trying to reference the correct areas in the current regulations, um, catching some typos and, and trying to just clean up a little bit bring that into alignment with what our current regulations state. So uh, I was unable to find your red line, Christina. I do have the originals and that's all I have. Let's see. Well, I was trying to share my screen, but I can't get back to Zoom where I can share it. And I'll go ahead. I, I, I was trying to have. I was trying to share the screen, but for some reason, it's not. I'm not able to get back to where I was on the Zoom, where I can try to share it. Um, but one of the first edits again was a, a change in uh, regulation reference because it referenced old regulations prior to 2019. Um, so striking part one, section two, to be revised to article. 1.F, um, also in section two, uh, revising the language it has under there about quorum to match with our current regulations um, states, a quorum shall be a majority of the appointed planning commissioners and no less than three members, because um, previously it just stated that it was five members, um, which doesn't match with our current regulations. Um, there's also an addition of no meeting shall convene in between um, absence of a quorum and the secretary shall enter in the minute, minute stating the absence of quorum that the member shall disperse. Um, that was missing from the bylaws, but was in the regulations. I tried to eliminate some of these extra spaces, but you know how it is when you have your format stuff turned on, it doesn't all go away. Um, so I had some formatting changes to try to make the format consistent because um, I had to convert this from a PDF to Word and work with it that way. Um, so there's a lot of format changes here and there based on that. Um, one page, I believe this is four says it's four out of 12, um, subpart D right before section eight, 
um, added of these bylaws after section four. Because um, when I was trying to review that piece of it, and that was actually something I wanted to kind of discuss a little bit, it says the planning commission members shall participate in annual training as prescribed in part four, section four, and I added of these bylaws because I was trying to figure out where it was referencing that for a while, and I finally figured out that's within this. Um, so I added that for clarification, and so that's also a discussion point of whether we want to leave that in there um, since that section references um, annual training, although I think we, we do try to do that. Um, and then the, it continues, you know, the standard this language has already was in there was except in the case of a prearranged excused absence in the event of an unavoidable absence that planning commission members shall review the materials, all the materials covered in the training session. Um, Let's see. And again, I've got a lot of formatting changes on page five, um, but going down below section 12, election of officers, uh, A is again a change in reference because it references part one, section two of the old code from prior to 2019. So that's been re revised to article one F7. So it's difficult for me to follow this. I hope you guys there can see it. I, I I got lost when she got into it, so I don't have it. I was looking as, you know, if there was a PDF sent to us and I couldn't find it. So this is more extensive than I thought. And Dan, I, I just went out to Civic Clerk and I just pulled it up just now. Okay, let me, I, all right, I'm going to try, but uh, I think I'm not going to be able to vote on it because I don't have it. It's up to you guys. Because I, I, you know, I, I wish if it was up on the screen or if I could have it. Uh, we're working gotta, on that again, Dan. See if we, we're having some issues trying to get Zoom where it'll let us um, share screen. Okay, I'm trying to pull it. I'm going to Elbert County to try to find it. Uh, it's not letting me in. What, Elbert County? The, uh... So without it, I'm just, you know, I, I, you guys go along with it. It's fine with me. Dan, can you get to uh, the Elbert County website? Dan, can you get to the Elbert County website? I can't get the website to come up. Uh, oh, it, okay. it's being persnickety at the moment. Oh. I'm trying to figure out why Elbert County website. I can get to it sometimes, and sometimes I can't. See what that is? What is it? Huh. Okay. Well, uh, so, all right. I might be able to share now. I think we've got it. There we go. Where I can see the share screen. Okay. Goodness. Ah. So that's where I'm at right now as I was talking about page five last. Um, if you want me to go back through, Dan, I can go back over real quick. Yeah. Uh, I Well, page one, a majority of members, that was the change. What was the second thing you said? It was on page four, but, you know, the old one's only page 10 pages. So I have to follow you up here. Oh, this is, I'm having a little fun with this because I'm turned around on my screen the way this is. So I'm trying to find where my mouse went, which it went back to the other screen. Give me just a minute. Control home. So we'll take it back to the very beginning here. There we go. So you can see the red line copy now. Uh, yeah. In the first paragraph where part one, section two is struck and it has a new reference for article one F um, referencing where it is in our current regulations. And then below, when you get to section two, absence of quorum, the language changes there are changes made to align this with what our current regulations state. I'm good with that. 
uh, date correction from when I updated this. And I was t saying before, hopefully it'll get rid of all these extra spaces whenever I accept changes, but right now I've got to live with them. Um, there's uh, just noticing formatting. Um, again, like I said, I tried to go through and, and consolidate and keep the same format throughout. I, I'm following you, thank you. Okay. Here's the um, page four that I was mentioning earlier, D, um, right above section eight, where I added of these bylaws for clarification. That's talking about the annual training. Okay. So I really tried not to go too drastic on changes. I just tried to clean up as much as possible. Um, and, and bring to match. And again, here's where we were a minute ago on page five, again, with formatting, trying to clean up some issues there um, and down in section 12 there, uh, removing part one, section two, to update the current regulations stating article one F7. And in my review, I noticed uh, under part three, second paragraph, it was previously said Elbert City. So I <laughs> caught, caught a typo, corrected that. Wonder how many years that's been on the books that way. And some of the lines you'll see on the side, we're trying to eliminate extra spacing. So it won't actually do that until I accept the changes in the document. And then you'll see over there again, formatting, because I was trying to make the formatting consistent throughout. Um, part four hearings and meetings under section two, um, I took out the once per month um, because our standard meetings are the first and third Tuesdays of each month. So that's what I revised it to state. Now, sometimes we won't have anything like actually this one that would be coming up March 2nd. Everything that was going to be on there has, they didn't get their advertising done. So we do not have a meeting unless you guys want to meet for something else on March 2nd. So. Let's see. Again, a lot of formatting and trying to remove extra spacing. Yeah. Don't. I did add at the end of uh, the paragraph under 3A here, um, at any meetings, each planning commissioner shall have one vote for each item, because before it just said one vote. We have to assume <laughs> <laughs> and, and that line there again is showing I was trying to eliminate the extra spacing in between the sections, which will happen and whenever I tell it accept changes. Um, I don't recall if I have a lot more of, of extra spacing in here. Um, I added PC after Elbert County Planning Commission. It made sense because the BOCC, you know, is behind the Board of County Commissioners, and that is a common acronym. So I thought, all right, that's easy. Um, and you'll see here, this is the bottom part of page 10. Um, I moved meetings because it wasn't in alphabetical order. So I didn't change any language. I just moved it. Let's see, that might be all of it. Well, no, again, all these extra spaces, I'm hoping I can get rid of that when we get through the cleanup here. Uh, and this again is the same language you saw earlier um, where I'm trying to line it up with what the current regulations say regarding quorum. So I believe, yep, that is all the changes I had. And again, a lot of it was just cleanup stuff. 
Um, if there were other things you guys want to change, add, discuss, um, that's part of why we have it as a work session to go through and, and see if there's other things that need to be added or changed. Kind of covered all this stuff, Dan. Dan, how are you? Can you hear me, Dan? Got to unmute. I have to unmute. Um, I'm good with it. Uh, there are very little changes now that I've seen it, uh, and uh, I don't have any problems with this. Okay. Uh, now, do we need to vote on it. Yes. The changes and approving, correct? These bylaws shall be effective upon adoption by a majority vote of the council. Yep. That's I can't hear you guys. <laughs> the, very, okay. the very bottom line says uh, these bylaws shall be effective upon adoption by a majority vote of the Planning Commission. Yeah. So, we have a motion. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I can I can get the motion. I I, I move you. <laughs> Peter can make a motion. Okay, I'll make the motion that we uh, approve the uh, changes as shown tonight. And I think we have a second down there from Jeff. I'll second it. Okay, <laughs> got a bunch of seconds. All right. Any further discussion? None. No. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. That covered, Christina? Yes, sir. I think the only thing left on the um, agenda is adjournment, right? Okay. So I'll make a motion that we uh, adjourn. It's not 11 o'clock yet. <laughs> <laughs> hey, wait a minute. It's okay. past my bedtime. Where, where's the pizza? Right. Don't move. We're